Uh, Matt, you dropped a big piece about Mason Mount, though, uh, and kind of yeah. talking. Apparently, you're still hearing frustrations and groans and moans about him. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of sort of stuff directed at him again after the USA game. You know, it feels like he had an outstanding game against Iran, uh, a really outstanding game. And whatever people want to say about Iran, they're, they're ranked 21 in the world. They were very good against Wales. They didn't play well against England, but that was partly because England and people like Mason Mount did play very well. And he has an outstanding game against Iran and very little gets said by the sort of online social media noise and his critics and a few pundits who obviously were focusing on the guys who scored, which is fine. And then a quieter game against the USA, a lot like the rest of our team. And yet you hear it again and it comes up again. The first thing you hear is Mount needs to be dropped and lots of criticism Mount. So I just decided to, I really crunched a lot of data. I mean, a lot of it's surrounding what his old managers and current managers and teammates have said to him, but a lot of it is just crunching the data. And if you actually go through the data that FIFA provide these teams um, from all their sort of technical staff and data analysts and the eight cameras, I think, that they have that then gets put back to the teams for post-game analysis, if you actually crunch the data on it, he was one of England's better performances on data. Now, I'm, I know I personally don't judge all my football through data, but you can't just ignore it. And when you've got, Manage former managers, current managers, current teammates, former teammates, rival managers. When you've all got them backing mount, and then when you've got the data backing mount, you know, you, at some point, at some point, you've got to say, well, where's the criticism coming from? You know, where where is this? It, you've got to start to call it an agenda. Where is this agenda coming from? Dan, would you like to be team? opposing mount would you like to represent no, the never <laughs> uh you know crit criticism gets applied where criticism is due and i don't think you can point at mason mount as the failure for england not winning the game so no there's no there's no kind of individual blame that i would associate there uh apparently todd bowley has been in the world cup to watch some performers do you think uh he's just gonna say yeah that midfield i like that let's uh let's do the business obviously bellingham being the the hardest one to capture at this point but it sounds that like looked, there's opening for declan that look first of all they would love to get bellingham you know that they, they will they will bid big and hard on bellingham it's just they know that they're not among the favorites for bellingham at the moment and obviously it's only halfway through the season, but the current league position and the, the slight feeling of transition around Chelsea and stuff at the moment doesn't help their cause, but you don't know where the season will finish and he's not going to move in January and everyone's going to jostle for position, but he, his just Bellingham's decision will, will come down a lot to, to a lot of how teams finish the season as well. Uh, Chelsea is still in the Champions League. They can still make top four. A lot can change and... They will, I'm pretty sure Chelsea will match any bid that is made for Bellingham. In terms of money, I don't see anyone getting higher for Bellingham. Um, but the, the move won't just come down to money. But, but Chelsea will be there or thereabouts. Do I expect them to go there? Currently, no. But as I said, we're only midway through a season. But it won't be for lack of money and lack of trying. Rice, he will definitely, definitely leave West Ham at the end of this season. I'm 100% confident on that. Uh, West Ham are preparing to sell Declan Rice. I think it'll be about 70 million. Um, Chelsea aren't actually in pole position at the moment for Declan Rice. So there are a couple of clubs who have who have made big plays for Declan Rice, but that's not because Chelsea aren't going to. That's just because a couple of clubs have tried to go go early on Rice. Um, and again, I would expect Chelsea to to move on Rice. And again, I would I would be quite surprised if anyone outbid Chelsea on Rice, albeit. As I say, I think there are two clubs ahead of them at the moment, and I can't say who they are. I'm sorry. Am I being cheeky? Wondering Premier League maybe... clubs? Premier League clubs, yeah, I can say that. Yeah, okay. I, I would imagine so. Um, is, is Mason trying to tie his extension to Deckers? <laughs> it's, it's an interesting one. You know, they're, they're, they're such great mates. The families are great mates. They're very Package close. deal. <laughs> you know, there's no way in a million years people people aren't talking to one another when they're spending this much time together about what life's like and, and what's going on and blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure Declan knows more about Mason's contract situation than most people. I'm also sure that Mason knows more about Declan's future than most people. So 
yeah, all these things will be getting discussed. But yeah, Todd Todd Bowley was there for the Iran game. I believe he's going to be, he may well have been there for the USA game for all I know. It's not quite as easy to spot people. You know, he, he won't get his picture taken quite so freely and easily around Qatar and Doha. Um, but he's definitely due to be at more games. And the World Cup's a shot window for everybody. And the good news for Chelsea is that Pulisic and Hakim Ziyech are very much uh, sort of increasing their value so far by both having good World Cups at the moment. 